direct fields, the first name, last name, person has a car, it will go into that car field and set all those other things. So basically whole object graph, it, it is able to do. So at this point, maybe give a brief, int brief introduction to how the templates can be set up. Again, just like Java, you have a fast code preferences, and there you go the templates, and here the templates. So now here, you can edit the templates here. And it, so the templates can be, you know, like this one needed a class, right? You have to know which class it is, and then you need the fields for, from that class. So it is kind of a, uh, then you need a first template item and the second template item. And second template item is child, children of the first template item. So, but it's very generic as you can see, not only class and fields, we can later go and see it from a package, it can pull in all the classes and then generate some template, and generate some code. So it go one by one, but this is the most simple case, you know, uh, you can see. And uh, this kind of a little bit small, but it does have, you know, if you type in, uh, some autocomplete, it will have class, okay. Class meaning the class you have selected will be the class. Field will be the fields that you selected, they will become the fields. Some built-in variable which is easy to remember names. That's not hard, right? So you can set up the temp template here. I, you can also, you can also export it into, into a file and then import it back. So it changes that way. Or you can change right here. Okay? And also one more thing. And how did it know that person has a car object? So for that, another configuration is required. Basically, you put your top level project, top level package. So if inside there's a car and the package matches, it starts with, it will go in, inside that. If it is Java string, Java line string doesn't match. So if you think Java, it will stop right there. Okay, so it will not go in. So that, like that. Now, another cool thing also, also, you can either do a flat view or hierarchical view, <coughs> depending on your, uh, depending on your, what do you call that, style. I like flat view, and in that case what will happen, see it nicely also creates a, it will create a comment also. So in the hierarchical view if you uh, do that, instance of class again, and I, I'm using the latest uh, code which is not the greatest looks like. You have select class, once you have used it, it's supposed to come as an option, it's not working. But if you download the version from the website, it will be working. So again, class person, I create a EMPL. Now it is more hierarchical. You can see the object graph here. So it's maybe, depending on your style, you may prefer this, okay? But now, I really wanted to do it do, do it, okay, again. Now, what is good, you know, <coughs> if you want to keep that, that kind of code, that kind of code inside, in one, in method, <coughs> what, would be, what would be better? Well, you have to do it again, I guess. Now I'll just select few fields now. Title. Yeah. And it has some little spacing issue. But otherwise it is what is valid. Yeah. Now you can put in your name, you can put 
see for the string fields, it automatically put a quoted string and date of birth, other objects you put now. Uh, and you go through how, to, how you can customize that. But uh, it is good to keep all this method, all this code in one place. I mean, what do you do? You usually put it in a method, you know, so it's more clear. So you can refactor, Eclipse, refactor you can do. So it will, you can say that, you know, say maybe create person method and automatically create a person and put a nice little method. But what would be wrong, what is wrong with that, with that process, with that method? And you don't like to be, have one method that takes no argument and inside the values are, you probably want to method that takes the values as a parameter and then inside the, that would be even cooler, right? So Eclipse won't do that, you know, for some reason. Uh, it doesn't know how to do that, okay? So we'll delete that. So I'll it again, but before that, we'll go and change it to flat view, which is what I like. So, so let's see if Eclipse can fast code would create a more user-friendly method. So we'll do it again. Basically, there's a keyboard shortcut, and it comes up. When you press that, it will come up. So for this, there is one thing called instance of a class as a method. So let's see what happens. So person, again, make, make it EMPL. But again, now select the fields. Let's select all those fields, except person ID and type salad. OK. Now here it comes. Where do you want to, it will ask, where do you want to create? In this class or some other class, right? You, you can select this class, current class, or what will be better, maybe you have some utility class or factory class, what do you want to put, you know? So let's see. I can, that's why I have a person util class, I'll put it there. I, I want to put it there, okay? So let's see what it does. So it will say, uh, create the method create person in class util. You can see that? It's kind of small. I say OK. So did you see? Now do you see create person anywhere? You see create person, it created the class over there and automatically put a method, automatically put a call to that method. So not only it create the person, and how do you know it is created? Of course, you can go there, and it's right there. It was not there before, OK? And again, the same thing. Here, apparently, it didn't do the spacing. So now, if you see, is the font size too big, or it put first name, right? It's more user friendly because there's no parameter, and you can call one method and supply the. And automatically in the current class, you put the call, right? And put a static import into it. So you, you don't, only thing you didn't do is uh, it's supposed to do. I don't know. Okay. So you think the main method template was check now, all those things are cool. So what do you think about this, you know? This is, it, this is even super cool, right? It created the whole, whole method and created a call to that method in the current class, okay? So I call it, let's call it super cool. 
and in, in a whatever class you want to. Now one one thing to notice here. Yeah, there is, do you see the red marks over here, line 47? That is not a compiler error, you know, compiling it, this code compiles, but what infinite test has detected, since I called here, create person, and infinite test has become red, red, you know, down there, red border, if you can see. Uh, create person, I'm sending null, so it's throwing null pointer exception over there. Okay. So let's go. Let's go examine this method again. Okay. So, but don't don't uh, don't panic. You know. Everything will be fine. Now, if I I mean if I I call this super cool. So. If it is already super cool, you know, what can you do? What can you do even better? You can, you can make it super duper cool, maybe. So what, for that, what you need to do, actually I forgot. A version enable. For that, you can enable the automatic checking. Okay. So now this, so still look at the, you know, this code. This is a code, what can go wrong there? You know, as soon as you have done it, you can check it in. This code this is a simple utility class. And as soon as you can, as soon as you have created it, you can check it in and other people can start using it. Not until seven days later, where you have tested all other things, uh, your web service, your, <laughs> your SQL, you don't need to wait uh, you know, till the end. Uh, so I don't know if it created. Uh, so far. Okay, it was. Yeah, it, it created, you know. So when I said I said no, don't check it in, but at that time what it does, it puts it into a cache and then you can go to the menu and you can <coughs> see what, what, what the files you have created through this plugin and it will but let's not I mean okay, but let's try to do that. <coughs> so commit files, the no person util, <coughs> okay. So if you say okay, and say it will detail only, it will give the warning only this file will be checked in. If it depends on other file and that is not checked in, not checked. But you have to make sure that one. That. So if you say yes, but boom, it detected there is an error, so it built out, okay. So let's fix that error there. And also, I cannot see the whole screen here. How about that? Yeah. Font size is too big. But, but you know, you select, I selected all the fields. Maybe you connect to, maybe you need to massage it a little bit, change it a little bit. And I don't need the factory, maybe. Just I'll remove factory, location, size. Uh, Okay. It complain. I mean, let's complain. And because factory, then you have to remove this factory. Remove this. Okay. Now there's still the infinite test. Now I'll put in. We need to put in value here. So. Okay. So for that, I know I can type it in, or I have it saved somewhere. So let's try that. Okay. So I will. Okay, now the infinite test is there. Now this code is fine. Now you can go to the other class, util class, and you can check it in. Check in file to repository, then person util is select, and then that one will come. This time no error, it will automatically check in. Okay. 
So now if you see the history, Is this to from the seven fifteen? Oh yeah. See, so put a nice, nice method, nice, nice, nice comment. Create, created method, method, uh, create person. My name with exact date and style. You know, is eight o'clock. Eight. So and you can go and in the preferences, you can set it all up, you know. So basically it has user meaning the current user, then you can send the prefix. Automatically put the prefix, you know, it may be a January release, February release, or maybe some bug number. Okay, so that will be useful, right? Now some people will say Like, you know, somebody will say, you want to wait until you have done the whole thing. That's one philosophy. But I think, you know, these kind of things, you can easily check in and other people can start using it right away. And this plugin makes it very easy in right there. You, know. you still make sure that there's no error. And error it will check, right? It checked that there are errors and stop. So person service test. Now it is now it is you know compiling and running. You know, test is great. So let's go and at this point we can be more courageous, right? We can save person. We can actually save it in the database. Okay. So for that you have to do what you have to do. Either you can write some SQL, you know, or go through some DAO like Hibernate and create a DAO class and save it. So for that, so before I do that, okay, typically what you do, you have person service, person controller maybe, person action or person DAO. Typically, but today I'm not going to do person DAO, specific for person. So this is called generic DAO. Okay. Now think of a you know DAO methods. What do they do? They just need save, update, you know, typical uh, persistence methods. And the generic DAO makes it possible. Is a little bit strange syntax. Okay, basically it means it is. T is a type parameter T and then primary K, primary key. So basically if you know the class and the, this primary key class, you can create a use the generic DAO. Okay? And let's see if it will work. Okay. So that is only an interface, right? So you need a code that will actually do the job. So I have a generic DAO, I call it generic DAO web hibernate and implements generic DAO, which will implement all those methods. Okay. So this is something very standard. People who do Spring Hibernate, you know, you'll say session factory, get the session factory, and then you can say for session factory dot get. Okay. Uh, so we don't have that much time. We'll go right into how do how do I create, how do I use that? So you can create a. Actually, let me just bring it in here. So this is how you create it. It's a generic DAO and person and long 
is the primary key. The person ID, that is the primary key, is long. And person is the actual class that will be uh, persistent. So that sounds familiar? I mean, that probably does not sound familiar. You're more used to, a lot of people are more used to writing a person down and then uh, having a whole new class. Now let's see what happens the infinite test. Now although I change this class, infinite test will not pick up the change. Uh, so if you go here, if you change this class, you have to fail. Now infinite test has got become red. So what is the error? So if you go here, oh I know I did not call it. So person down self. Person. Okay. And I forgot actually this. Let's make it integer. Oh, I guess create. So I'll create a person, okay? Now it is a comp compiling, but will it save yet? Now again. I don't want to run it, I just, if I resave that, it will, it's, not comp it's not running. It just is complaining. Because at this point, we know that person DAO we have created, it's just an interface and it will be, it will be now, right? It will, it will be throwing null pointer exception. Now at this point, uh, what are the things you need to do here? We already did the check now. We removed it, but we, that is one thing you can do. So maybe you want to do, you know, do debug. You have to print the fields, right? Sometimes you have to print for debugging. Then again, the fast code template will come handy. So it's a print fields of class. Okay. Then say again, you select person. And this time, it will, you can actually employ, you can select from here, okay? So now our info. And again, you can select any number of methods, and any number of fields, <coughs> let's select all that, you know. Boom, it will. Now this is not compiling because this is, if you can uh, see, it is uh, the basic template. Uh, the default template gives you the SL4J style, uh, SL4J style, but I have only log, log, log4j. So for that you just have to give it a one string. In SL4J you can give like that, okay? So it is tedious to go through all of them, just uh, have a couple of them, okay? Car also, remove the car, okay? So this will, so do you think this works? Although infinite test is running, you cannot see what it generating. So for this time, you have to run the by yourself and run it as a JME test. And then you can see, oh, give an exception. Oh, 
but we know what the exception is, right? Because person DAO is still now. So let's. Uh, if you know Spring, that you have to create a bin which is of type generic DAO, but its instance is person DAO. Okay? So I can create it here, but the way you create that one, let's just copy paste it here right now. We all copy paste, right? So, so basically we are doing a bean class of that generic DAO implementation and ID is a person DAO. Okay. And you give two constructor argument, which is the class and session factory. Uh, then you go here. Now it's green. Because the person DAO was now, I did not define anywhere. It was just an interface. Uh, but uh, my point was to show the logger, is it logging anything? How do you, how do you see that? You know, Infinitest is running in the background, you cannot see. So for that, you have to manually run it one time. OK, so then it comes to the console. So let's see the console put anything. So first name we put right. First name was Ted. Is it visible there? Okay. This mouse is okay. <laughs> it did print, you know, and it was see. How easy it was to generate, you know, for so many fields. If you have to fill, you know, print ten fields, how easy it was just select the field from the menu. You get that, okay? So, so that works. But you probably don't want to print all the fields in separate lines, it will become huge, right? You probably want to print first name, last name, and title in one line. But you can customize the template, it will put it in one line. So that my details, you know, I'm not going to go through, but you can see, you know, the simple the idea behind it, the template is very nice. Okay? So maybe I remove that. So maybe you want, you want to write some code here. For that, what you need to do, you maybe have to extract certain fields from the person. Okay? So similarly, if plugin makes it easy, extract fields from the class. Okay? So again, browse the class. Person and select EMPL from here. Okay. Again, you can select so many fields. Oh. The spacing is a little bit of a problem, but you can see it automatically called the getter methods and assigned, right? Assigned a, that much code it could generate, you know, in, so quickly. So, all you can do, you know, if you do go through Eclipse, you have to, each line, you know, the Eclipse gives <coughs> assistance when you do control space, but that takes a while. If you, if you can, even with Eclipse help, to generate this much code, it will take, take a while. But with this, you know, you can, okay? So extract, but so you're getting the idea? And based on the class and some fields, 
that you choose, it can generate you know so many. And I'm only showing uh, the you know most commonly used templates. You know, on top of that, you can write your own template. Uh, okay. So I'll remove uh, all that. It's still compiling. Um, now let's say you want to do something, some more tricky business logic. Uh, so let's say if person employee if is female, then there's some special something special. Maybe. So employee female gender equals. Okay, now you have to type, you know, equals gender, female, maybe, then maternity leave or something. So at this point, what you do, you create a constant in another file and you import it here, right? And then, then you can use, or you can use, again, here, this comes handy here. You can say create static field and import. Can you see that? Uh, so let's see how it works. So it will create a static field and I have a class called constants. So right there. Okay. So maybe create a gender, give it gender, gender female, and value is F. That will say all these things. Do you want to check in now? No. So did you see what it did? It created a constant, gender female, automatically put it here, automatically static imported it here, and it was, and created the field in the constant class. Okay? So now at this point, you know, again, do you want to check it in? You can check it in, right? Yeah, you don't want to wait uh, two weeks until all your code is done, all your SQL is done, everything. Because this is your, as soon as you check it in, other people can start using it. But I did not check in. So maybe you want to check it first, visually, and maybe you want to position it, you know, it will always put it as the last element. And maybe you want to change that F to the uppercase. I remember I just put all lowercase, but still it put the you know, uppercase it. So, you are happy with that, you know, with this, then you can go and check it in. It's a constant of Java, you know, that was the file that was modified. So it will only pick up the classes that there are some atomic changes, like created a field, or created a method, just a create snippet, it will not pick up. So let's put that. Again, it will give the usual warning, auto check-in. Right? Now if you go ahead and check the history. What is the history? Again. What do you do? Show history. Again, you see this created a put the prefix and created field, gender female, and then my name, and then uh, all, you know, exact details, date, timestamp. So, and these kind of things you can check in, you know, don't check in your other code, but this simple changes, you, as soon as you check it in, other people can start using it. So, what is there should be nothing wrong there. But let's say, you know, somebody else has modified and your, your code is what, what you call? Stale. Then it will be wild. It will, it will error out. At that point, say, hey, yeah, somebody else has checked in, we need to update. Okay? So from now, now from this point, I'll disable automatic check-in. 
because it will keep on annoying, right? So I, so I created the field, we upper test it, and then we put, put this here and it, static imported. You know, you are familiar with static import, right? So you don't, you don't say constants dot, you just say gender, and if you go in the import section, see, this import static, that means you, know, you can use it as if it is in this class. Okay? So I go to the save person. Now everything should be working, right? I remove all that, you know, uh, not necessary. So again, go to person class and infinite test is happy, you know. Is saying okay, everything's fine. But let's check our database. Is anything there? So I refresh, nothing there. Okay. So I have I have put a rollback. So let's comment rollback out. Okay. Infinite test automatically run it. So let's see if it is there now. Still not there. So maybe it is rolled back by default. So it's a roll back false. Okay, now do you think it will work? Yeah. Okay. Now as soon as soon as you make uh, I think if you put transactional then automatically roll back it you know false. So if you actually you make some changes and save it again, it will go to database and it will put another one. Okay. So the whole thing worked, right? So what we learned from this, that you did not have to create person DAO. Let's say you have payroll, you have person, person DAO address, you need salary, all these DAOs you didn't have to create, you just have a generic DAO. Okay. And also along the line, you, can, you could see if you write your custom code, there are you know, so many templates you can use, it will make your life easier. And not only easier, as soon as you're typing, as soon as you're creating some, what should I say, some atomic code, you can check it in automatically. Okay? Uh, how much time is left? Uh, it's 40 right now, maybe uh, about five, ten minutes. Oh, that's it? Okay. Yeah, that was a, uh, okay. Um, so I wanted to, I mean, show a whole lot of things, but let's go to the, a controller, okay? So now you are writing a web app, right? You have a controller, a Spring controller, you know, and you have some URL where you go to the URL and see the person details. I don't have all that, you know, I'll just show a basic demo. So I already have this set up, you know, you go to uh, your URL slash person.htm, you will see the, you know, person. But I don't have all that. So if you go here, is a sample, you see the URL, sample person dot, so you will get a, you will get a web page, you know, and behind the scene Tomcat is running, okay, Tomcat is running, but that is not the point, I mean what happens is the request mapping, you, you give the URL here, and then you can either return a string, you know, or something they say model view. You know, string will just simple JSP. So person means it will just person.jsp it will go to. Okay? And if you see person.jsp, what is there? It's a go to exists nothing much, you know. So that's why it shows here. Now what if what if you want to do now another one, okay? Instead of Gotham exists, you say Josh exists. Okay. So, <laughs> so what do you do then? 
you have to write another controller, another method here, and you have to create a, a JSP, right? You have to do all that, okay? So you can do all that uh, manually, or you can have a template. The template, so I call it request mapping with new JSP, okay? So let's see what it does. Here. So I put, okay? And I use module, let's just say module, you know. So I say JAWS and the word project, you know, the project, the current project automatically selected, so let's say this one. And I say, okay. Then it will say what, what all it's going to do. You can go through in detail, we don't have time. Oh, did it disable? <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't pick up. But see, it put, it created JAWS.JSP over there. And I, for simplicity, I just put two, you know, uh, tag lights, you know, C, but in general you have maybe a whole lot of, you know, spring tags, you know, what not, a lot of other tags. Maybe you want to create, you know, put a CSS, you have JavaScript. So you can put all those things here, you know, and go through that. And created that, and over there, person controller, what it did? So that is more interesting. So this time it created a model view, Josh model, right? And for the model view, it Josh view, it created a, created a, even a constant here, okay? And it put all this code, you know? But it puts code, but does it work? And here even put a to-do where you have to put your, get your, get details about Josh and put into the model, okay? But will it work? Does it work? I've generated some code. So let's see if it's Josh. If I put Josh here, okay. Josh. Oh. 404. This was not happening. So I don't have auto deploy. I really need some kind of like JRegul or something. So I did a, wrote a new, 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 simple AND script that will deploy the thing. And I have to unfortunately do the. I don't know if it still work. Still doesn't work. But if you restart, it will definitely work. It doesn't take a whole lot of, whole lot of time, but the automatic deployment is nice. It came up. Okay. So did you, so did you see what it did, just did? It not only created the controller method, Crazy. Not only created the controller method over here, it created the appropriate JSP and put the reference, right? Now if it didn't do that, you know, if it, let's say, by mistake, and it put even a, let's say if you have extra H here, and then you do build, build the thing, and then go to you have to restart. Okay. Now again you'll get the error. Error. So it matches, you know, you don't have to worry about much. All this. So I had a whole lot of things to show, you know, I could, I could have gone on another two hours, <laughs> but uh, I don't know why you want to stop here. Uh, I could have shown a lot of other things, but you, you see the thing, this plugin not only generates code inside a code, which Eclipse does, right? And another thing, this, that the request mapping I showed, I type, type in here, request mapping, new JSP, 
evaporate. So if I go to the person service input class, if I do here you will not find the question again. Unless, unlike Eclipse template, <laughs> Eclipse template, see, once you define it is valid on all Java files. But here you can put a pattern. So if you go here again to the preferences, templates, preferences, So edit you know, right there, you said last column is only valid in controller.java, I mean star controller Java. So that's one nice feature. I mean that template you don't need anywhere else. So, so that is one thing, you know. Um, I guess I can show one more thing, one more simple thing. And that is uh, that was with new JSP, right? Now suppose josh.jsp already existed. What is that? Suppose it already existed, okay? So for that, you know, now it is all, I did not delete the josh.jsp. So again, you can do that and then new JSP is with the existing JSP, okay? So in that case, it will ask you to select the file, basically the JSP, okay? So, Josh, oh, what is that? Okay. Again, it will say all this, you check it out. So in this case also it did exactly the same thing, at this time did not, did not create the JSP, it used it, you know, and the same code, and obviously it will work, right, it, same code it worked last time, and the main thing, I mean, so notice here that it creates a, for the view, it creates a constant automatically, and automatically matching the name. Similarly, if you want, you can create a uh, well then for the URL, create a constant, right? So I think I'll stop here. So in summary, uh, it helps to make code generic, you know, you don't create, as in the generic DAO we saw, you don't create the whole new classes for each module or each object. You can use the generic DAO pattern and, uh, and the templates, on the template side, you know, Eclipse uh, templates helps you a lot, but doesn't give something more, you know. Then you can use the fast code template or some other templating mechanism. There are other, like Jet templates, there are Jet templates, there are other things, I'm sure. But this is a uh, simple introduction to the fast code template mechanism. So, hope you liked it, you know, and if you like it, you know. And if you, for your uh, work, if you need, you know, this this template, you know, you can post it on the team and, and post it on the forum, and my team will create a template for you. <laughs> All right. Thank you for now. I guess that's uh, pretty much it. Do you have anything to say, Josh? Um, no, except for uh, you know, we're always looking for speakers and we're excited to get more local community involvement and local speakers. So. Thanks, Governor Rush.